Condoms are safe and incredibly effective when they're used consistently and correctly. But the fact is, human beings just don't like to use them all the time, or they're just not the option for an entire sexual life. 50 years, if you're lucky, right, of sexual activity. So we need options. It was like, it's wasting of time putting it on. I have to go straight to the point. Why should I take it on? Maybe I'm trying to have a quick one. Usually I use a condom, but sometimes someone I had sex with didn't want to use it. I wasn't against it perhaps, so I just let it go. I, I didn't use it, but I know it's not good not to use a condom. I think we were from a local Shibin, I think, and then everything happened very fast. So I just had to go with the flow and all of that. It was my only chance for him being around me. So I had to do sex at that time and then to satisfy one another. And then that was it. And I told myself, I won't do it again. I can't believe what I just heard. Not everyone can use me all the time. But I'm Mr. Condom. <sighs> hey, Mr. Condom, this isn't like you. Why so deflated? I feel rejected. Some people don't want me or aren't able to use me. But I know lots of people who are happy to use condoms. So why don't some people want to? They need me, you know? Especially in the fight to stop the spread of HIV. Well, you see, Mr. Condom, you're right. They do need you. And you are still number one in the fight against HIV. As you know, people who have sex without using condoms are at risk of getting HIV. And that's why you're so important. But, as you've learnt, you can't be there all the time. But there are no alternatives to me. Ah, but you see, there are alternatives being developed. They'll never replace you, but they could be there when people aren't able to use you all the time. And equally exciting, they could be used together with you. What are they then? Well, one of the options being developed is called rectal microbicides, although they aren't actually available yet. Take a look at this. Rectal microbicides um, are products that are being developed currently for HIV prevention, and really they're gels being developed primarily for people to use who are at risk of HIV infection through receptive anal sex. It also could be something that people who are using condoms anyway, but would perhaps like a little more protection, uh, would be able to use too. At the moment, uh, you can't get rectal microbicides at your local pharmacy. They're currently undergoing trials in clinics and hospitals to see if they work. Okay, so these rectal my 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 microbicides. Yeah, um, those. They're 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 being developed for use in people's uh, <laughs> bottoms, right? <laughs> it's not like you to get shy, Mister Condom. But yes, that's right. They're being developed specifically for use during anal sex. Like the scientist just explained, you see, rectal microbicides will be inserted inside the bottom partner's bottom before sex. But I still can't quite imagine it. What will it look like? It's a good question, you know, but we don't exactly know yet. Different products are currently being tested in clinical trials. Look. A rectal microbicide is really going to look like um, the types of gels people are already using for sex, sexual lubricant, see that type of product. Um, we're also working on a rectal specific applicator. So the hope is that this will you know, dispense the right amount of product uh, into the rectum and be comfortable for people to use. Mm, I know I shouldn't be getting excited because this rectal microbicide dude is really my competition. But Wow, it's interesting. <laughs> That's great. I love your enthusiasm. But you know, you need to stop thinking of rectal microbicides as your rival. 
Rectal microbicides will be complementary to you, not replacing you. So you'll need to work together, you know? Yeah, I guess so. It's just... I guess I've, I've, I've had the stage to myself for so long. I know. I do understand. Now, what else did you want to know? Well, I guess I'd like to know when they'll be available. It's a good question. Just like any medicine, rectal microbicides have to go through a process of testing to see if they're safe and if they actually work to prevent HIV. Okay, so how does that happen? Well, the development of any product is a rigorous process that takes a long time. It starts with a product being tested in a laboratory, followed by testing in animals before it's tested with people. Listen to this. Then they're tested in small studies in people to make sure they're safe and acceptable. And then the final stage, when we know it's safe, it's acceptable, um, is to determine, does it work? And in a phase three study, which can sometimes enroll thousands of people, um, we really understand whether you know, people who need these products can use them and whether they'll work. And you know something else? People who take part in these trials need to be HIV negative, so any potential participants are tested to make sure they don't have HIV before they join a trial. Also, everyone's given condoms, is counselled to use them, and is tested for HIV throughout the trial. Ooh, okay, what else? Tell me. In a minute. Come on now, I need a coffee. Let's go. I was just thinking. Presumably, it's a lot of effort to be in these trials. So why would guys all give up so much of their time when I'm here? My name is Ricardo Antonio Rush, but I'm known in the city as Rig, R-I-G. I was raised most of my life here in Pittsburgh. I'm 28 years old. And uh, what makes me tick, I kind of, a bunch of things. I'm kind of this little complex flower person, I guess. I love combining work and play and creativity, but my heart of hearts, I love to challenge and motivate and inspire people in any way that I can. Unfortunately, I've lost a lot of friends to HIV, and it just seemed like the trials were going to be this sort of um, doorway to knowledge. Now this is your choice, so you understand that you can withdraw at any time during this study. Okay. And if you choose... The whole idea of a gel that's being used with condoms and in lubrication to stop HIV transmission, to me, that motivated me to see exactly what it was about. Once I passed through all the preliminary screenings, I had the chance to take samples of the gel home and I had to apply them rectally by myself, quite easy. It's not like I had to perform Cirque du Soleil or some circus act, you know, it was very much at night, and then I would call in and give them a time of when I applied the gel. And then after that were follow-up meetings, where I would come in, I would ask, answer questionnaires. There was an importance in answering those questions authentically, because that data is important, and they want the best possible representation of what the gel would be like in a real-world setting. One time where I couldn't get to the applicator. Um, okay. You know, we're, we're, we're sexual people and things happen. And Absolutely. I hope it, it, it doesn't disqualify me from the study, does it? Absolutely not. This is what we need to find out. They tested HIV once when I started and then countless times during. There are different ways to test for HIV. Rick was tested with an oral HIV test, but you can also take a sample of a person's blood to test for HIV. Right. Now, you see this two-sided wand right there. What you want to do is use either side, start going across your teeth, underneath your gum, all the way across, and then flip the wand over and go across the bottom. And then insert it right in there. Very good. Then was the awkward part where you had to, you know, take off your pants and the doctor comes in and he gives you a rectal exam and thank God he was a small fingered individual. The more relaxed during this, the less uncomfortable it'll be. Next is the anoscope. Trial participants have regular anal exams to see how the gel is working and to check for sexually transmitted infections. I'll do a swab. Any type of questions that I asked, any type of concerns that I had, the staff was very thorough, they were very warm, they were very compassionate, and I left there feeling empowered. So are there any risks to taking part in these trials? Okay, you see, there are potential risks to taking part in any clinical <gasps> trial. There are things that might be uncomfortable, like the anal exam or needing to report back to the clinic staff. And there may be side effects from using the gel. But trial participants receive the support and care they need throughout the trial. 
So when, when our participants are participating in a clinical trial, they are given a comprehensive HIV uh, uh, prevention package, which includes condoms, uh, treatments to STIs, and uh, uh, risk reduction counseling. So to ensure that the participants are protected, the, um, they have got support uh, from the site study staff. They ensure confidentiality and keeping of their information. Besides all the support, information and education that you receive by the team at the clinics, there are also outside bodies, external review committees and community advisory groups who ensure that the participants are safe and properly cared for. To take part in a clinical trial is a huge decision and it's your own personal decision and that um, taking part in a clinical trial takes commitment. And you need to know and understand what it's about and to commit to using the product as instructed, coming to the clinic for study visits and being honest with the researchers if there are times that you have not used the product. Trial participants are the key to finding out if rectal microbicides are safe and if they are effective or not to prevent HIV. We couldn't develop rectal microbicides without volunteers. It's really as simple as that. Wow, it's quite a thing. I thought I was the only option for people to help stop the spread of HIV. Now I know about the development of these rectal microbicides, what they are, and what it means to take part in a clinical trial. Yep, it is quite a thing, you're right. And remember, Mr. Condom, you are still in the picture. Because trial participants are encouraged to use condoms as the scientists don't know if the rectal microbicides being tested work yet. And you know what? <sighs> After all this time, I think it would actually be quite a relief not to have to carry the responsibility alone. Yeah, I can understand that. But of course, now we have to hope that the trials will be successful and the scientists can develop a rectal microbicide that's safe and effective and something that people like to use. Wow, that would be great. I think it's great to have rectal microbicides because we'll have more choices to protect ourselves and it'll be great for the LGBT community. I think any kind of HIV prevention, whether you're transgender or gay or straight or black or white, I think any sort of prevention needs to happen. If we got choices, it would be great. A gel should be easy to use. If you are part of this, these trials and part of this activity, you will be helping to make history because we will have new options for people to protect themselves against HIV. And if you join a trial, you get involved in a trial, you will be a part of that story. If this does work, imagine the sort of pride and confidence that you'll have knowing that you help change and potentially save lives. You know, who wouldn't want to be a part of that?